This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church, especially for those of you joining us online or by way of KINA Radio. There's an order of worship available on our church's website for you to join with us in worship today. Let us worship God. Friends, as you are comfortably able, please stand and join in our call to worship. The very word of God is a light to our feet, a lamp to our path. We gather this day to hear the word of God, to offer prayers, sing songs of praise. We gather this day to worship God. Please remain standing as we join our voices in singing opening hymn number 266 to a slightly different tune, Joy to the World. Please be seated. To know God is to know God's mercy, justice, and love. To know God is to also know ourselves. And we are a people who have not loved as much as we should, always showed mercy, or worked for justice. So let us offer our prayer of confession, knowing that out of God's great mercy, we will be forgiven and made new. Gracious and loving God, we are a people who are always concerned about ourselves. We worry about what is ours and are concerned with getting more. We have not been guided by your spirit or the teachings of Christ. Forgive us, we pray, and gently guide us back to your way. Help us to think of others and sharing what we have with the world. Amen. Hear the good news. There is now no condemnation For those who are in Christ Jesus, know you are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.
So glad to see you. Is my speaker on today? Yes. Okay. Um, I want to tell you guys a story today. You ready to listen to a story? This is one of Jesus's most famous stories, and it went something like this: Once upon a time, there was a farmer. The farmer thought, "Hey, if I'm going to gather a big harvest this year, I'd better plant some seeds." So the farmer found a big burlap bag and filled it with seeds. He hung it around his shoulder. Then he went out all over the farm, taking big handfuls of seeds and throwing them in the air. There you go, little seeds. Grow where you're planted, he said as he threw them. The farmer liked to talk to seeds and his plants. The farmer walked along the road toward the field, throwing seeds all along the way. About then, Peter interrupted. "Um, Lord, that can't be right. If the farmer threw the seeds before getting to the field, they would be wasted. Jesus said, I wonder. Let me tell you what happened next. A lot of the seeds did fall on the road. Of course, they couldn't put down roots. But a flock of little birds saw what was happening, and they swooped down right away. They were so happy. Those birds ate up those seeds. Peter said, But Lord, doesn't the farmer want to grow a crop with those seeds? Jesus said, I wonder. Let me tell you what happened next. The farmer stepped off the road where the soil was very rocky, and he kept throwing handfuls of seed. Grow where you were planted, little seeds. Peter couldn't keep himself still. But Lord, how can the seeds grow in soil full of rocks? Jesus said, I wonder, let me tell you what happened next. It was rocky beside the road, but there was some soil there. So when the rains came, the seeds began to grow, bursting with life. But since there were so many rocks, the seeds couldn't make deep roots, and the sun dried them up. Peter said, that's so sad. All those plants died. All that seed was wasted. Jesus said, I wonder. Peter said, is that the end of the story? Did any of the seeds grow? Jesus said, no, Peter, that's not the end. There's more. As the farmer kept walking, he passed beyond the road to where the field was marked off by a row of thorn bushes. He threw handfuls of seed that landed right in the bushes. Grow where you are planted, little seeds. Peter butted in again. How can the seeds grow when they are ar- there are already thorn bushes there? Jesus said, I wonder. I'll tell you what happened next. When the rain came, the seeds under the bushes were bursting with life, and they put down roots. But the thorn bushes kept them in the shade, and the thorn bushes' roots took most of the rainwater from the soil, so the farmer's seeds couldn't grow. Peter said, I told you, what a waste. Jesus said, I wonder. Well, then the farmer stepped into his field. He had already plowed his field. He had taken out the rocks. He had taken out the weeds. Lots and lots of seed fell in the good, rich soil. Grow where you are planted, little seeds, said the farmer. And they did. The rains came and the sun shone, and they grew. But Peter was still wondering, Lord, but what about all the seeds that were wasted? Jesus pulled aside Peter and said, Peter, my friend, let me tell you a secret. This is a story about me. I'm the farmer. I plant seeds where I tell people about the kingdom of heaven. 
I have lots and lots of seeds. I plant my seeds everywhere. I give them to every kind of people, whether they have room to grow them or not. For loving us and telling us about the kingdom of God. Amen. Thanks for coming out. You guys were good listeners. Let us pray. In the reading of your word, may we be given light to see. May your word rest in our hearts and minds and in doing so, transform us into your faithful people. Amen. Friends, the warmth of God's presence arrives because God turns towards us in love. Forgiveness arrives because of the wilderness, uh, pardon me, the wideness of God's mercy. Joy arrives because we see a glimmer of our new life in God. As Isaiah proclaimed, So long ago, the word that goes out from the mouth of the Lord will not return empty, but shall accomplish its purpose and succeed in just the right thing for which it was sent. Please open your heart, mind, and spirit to listen for God's word to us this morning from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be the Lord, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Thanks be to God. This morning's parable and its interpretation are sandwiched between stories of opposition to the gospel. Prior to this morning's reading, in Matthew chapters 11 and 12, there are multiple stories of opposition and misunderstanding of Jesus' ministry. Then, following a series of parables, chapter 13 concludes with Jesus' hometown rejecting him. This first parable in chapter 13 may be an answer to the question, why does the gospel find fertile hearts to grow among some people, but not others? In answering this question with the parable of the sower, we are given a practical explanation of why so many more hear than understand the gospel, why more Christians are planted than bear fruit, But when we understand how God's word is planted in our heart to bear fruit, abundance follows. This morning's gospel challenges us to become sowers of God's grace, hope, and love so that nothing hampers the reach of Jesus' embrace. Please open your heart, mind, and spirit to listen for God's word to us from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, and 18 to 23. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there 
while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is God's word to us. In the summer of 1955, a woman from Montgomery, Alabama, took a two-week vacation to go to the Highlander Folk School near Mount Eagle, Tennessee. Highlander was founded by several people, including a Presbyterian named Miles Horton. Its aim was to get people together, especially black people and white people, to talk about and to seek to break down some of the racial barriers in the South. At first, the woman was self-conscious and apprehensive. She was unaccustomed to such racial mixing, where everyone called one another sister and brother. She began to warm up some when an African-American school teacher named Septima Clark took her under her wing. Septima Clark taught in the segregated schools of South Carolina, but in the summer, she was a trainer at Highlander. She encouraged her mentee to begin to live out of gratitude and generosity rather than fear. In this way, she could become a sower of the seed of love and justice. Her mentee would later write this about the generosity and gratitude Septima Clark sowed in her life. I'm always very respectful and very much in awe of the presence of Septima Clark because her life story makes the effort that I have made very minute. I only hope that there is a possible chance that some of her great courage and dignity and wisdom has rubbed off on me. Rub off, it did. Four months later, the sowing of the seed Miss Clark and Highlander School yielded great fruit after many frustrating failures. On December 1st, 1955, that mentee named Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat in a white section of a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. It was the beginning of the Montgomery bus boycott. It changed Rosa Parks' life, and it changed America forever. For more than 70 years, African Americans had been sitting in on public transportation, seeking integration without much success. Indeed, the infamous Plessy versus Ferguson case of 1896, in which the Supreme Court declared separate but equal the law of the land, was a decision on public transportation in Louisiana. Then in 1955, the seed of seeing the world through generosity and gratitude, rather than fear, was thrown through, sown through the actions of one unassuming woman. The fruit that act produced was stunning. It yielded 30, 60, 100 percent, 
and it astounded the world. The lessons Septima Clark showed in Rosa Parks' life in the summer of 1955, to live out of gratitude and generosity rather than fear, to become a sower of love and justice, is the lesson Jesus wanted both his listeners, his disciples, and you and me to live, to hear, so that we can live our faith. What sounds like a rather curious way of planting crops, throwing seed on every, any and every surface is Jesus' way of telling all who listen that the reach of God's grace, hope, and love is not limited by the cares or concerns of this life. Rather, just as God's love in Jesus Christ extends far beyond our expectations, so too are we asked to take up the seeds of the gospel with an attitude of gratitude and generosity rather than fear, so that we can join Jesus sowing God's kingdom everywhere. Jesus tells this rather curious parable of the sower and four kinds of soil in response to a season of disappointment. As I said in the two chapters preceding Jesus taking a seat on a boat so that more could hear his teachings, Jesus had encountered those who continually challenged both his teachings and healing miracles. Not everyone was open to the message Jesus proclaimed. But reluctance to hearing God's new reality did not stop Jesus from sharing God's grace, hope, and love wherever he went. We, however, play it safe, sowing the word only where we are confident it will be well received, and only where those who receive it are likely to become contributing members of our congregation. Too often we limit how we share the grace, hope, and love of God found in Jesus Christ. We're so accustomed to thinking that what we say and do should result in a guaranteed response, that when we do not get something in return, we hoard what seed we have. That's what happens when we stop learning what God is saying to us in Jesus Christ. God's grace cannot take root in our life or in the life of those who walk this journey with us, when the concerns of this life cause us to turn away from where Jesus leads. In the name of stewardship, we hold tightly to our resources, wanting to make sure that nothing is wasted, forgetting the parable of the sower. We stifle creativity and energy for mission, resisting new ideas for fear they might not work, forgetting that mistakes and failure or how we learn. Jesus' approach to proclaiming the gospel in word and deed is at odds with our play it safe way of life. The one we worship and serve, Jesus Christ, does not approach life or ministry from scarcity or fear, but rather from gratitude and generosity. We're not only called to, show, to sow the seed of the gospel where we imagine it will get, guarantee success, we are called to sow God's message of grace, hope, and love wherever we find ourselves. We are to rely not on our own devices, thinking we alone will bring about success, but rather trust that God is at work in us and through us, bringing a surprising harvest. Relying on the generosity of God's love in Jesus Christ, we adopt a posture of gratitude. When we start seeing life anew, in Jesus, we begin to see opportunities where our words and deeds help bring God's kingdom to reality. For Rosa Parks, that seed bore fruit, calling attention to the dignity of all God's children. How will we sow seeds of gratitude and generosity today? Who in our community is told they are less than? Where are the places where we can sit in solidarity with neighbors who need their dignity restored. At the heart of this parable of the sower is hope and possibility, not because of the expertise of the sower. The sharing of the love of God happens not only because of what we do or who we are, but because of who God is and what God is doing in us and through us. The hearers of this parable in every generation are reminded that we are asked to join God 
in the process of reclaiming the love of God in spite of the challenges and concerns of this world that can choke the seed of gratitude and generosity. As a congregation, we know the truth of this parable, of how seldom success takes root. We take the gospel into the world not knowing whether conditions are optimal for the seed of our efforts to flourish. A new idea for ministry falls flat on its face. A proposal that meets the needs of our neighbors is choked by reluctance to change, or an outreach effort is shelved due to criticism and doubt from too many tired voices. Hard soil, scorching sun, sharp thorns. As a church, we know the truth of this parable. But we also hear the promise of this parable. Keep on spreading the seed. Keep on proclaiming the gospel. Keep on showing the compassion of God's kingdom. We're lifting up the dignity of our neighbors, especially those who are different, other, or identify in ways we are unaccustomed to. When we sit in with them, we join Jesus sowing seeds of gratitude and generosity in ways that we do not always know and in places we cannot always see the gospel falls on good soil ensuring the great harvest god promises we do not always see immediate results but we have seen god at work in us and through us i have witnessed the harvest god promises whenever i've led confirmation classes and so have you when we have seen young people go and do amazing things through this congregation and far beyond these walls. I have witnessed a miraculous harvest as people of faith and their neighbors come together to help build Habitat for Humanity homes, which inspire gratitude and generosity so that everyone has a decent place to live. Our trust that God is at work in us and through us is not only heard in the parable of the sower, so too we hear the promise of God's extraordinary harvest in this morning's Old Testament reading. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. God never stops showing love and justice in our heart, mind, and spirit. God is continually at work in and among God's people throughout all times and all places. God is relentless in the pursuit of establishing God's kingdom for all God's children. God goes about this purpose through you and me when we join Jesus sowing the seeds of the gospel. What God and Jesus Christ puts in our heart, mind, and spirit is entrusted to us with the hope that we share this great gift of grace, hope, and love regardless of what we think the outcome will be. We're to become sowers who trust God to bring the growth God promises a harvest far beyond our expectations and asks us to come alongside Jesus to make that kingdom come. This peril of the sower reminds us all that we are not alone when gratitude and generosity guide our words and deeds, trusting that God is at work in us and through us, bringing about a yield beyond our expectations. I imagine much the same was true for Rosa Parks, as she decided to remain in the seat she took on that bus in Montgomery, Alabama so many years ago. Although we know that the action she took that day inspired a movement that reshaped our nation into a more just society, that day Rosa Parks had to trust in more than herself alone. May we too trust that in spite of setbacks and failures of the past and present, God and Jesus Christ promises abundant life when we go about the work of sowing the seed of the gospel. May we trust in Jesus, who shows us how to honor the dignity and humanity of all our neighbors. 
May we trust in Jesus who shows us how to honor the dignity of all our neighbors. And may we spread this good news in words and deeds, trusting that God, as God leads us into encounters that are opportunities to witness the bounteous goodness that blossoms among us. Let us pray. Most wonderful God, you have sown in us a seed which longs to put down deep roots and then grow towards the light. By your spirit, tend and nurture that which you have planted, that in spite of hard seasons, we may bring forth a harvest of wonder, love, and praise. Through Jesus, our brother and Lord, amen. I invite you now to stand and join in affirming our faith using words from a declaration of faith. Please stand. We know that God is not confined to the story we can tell. The story itself tells us God works his sovereign will among all peoples of the earth. We believe God works beyond our imagining throughout the universe. We acknowledge no other God. We must not set our ultimate reliance on any other help. We must not yield unconditional obedience to any other power. We must not love anyone or anything more than we love God. We praise and enjoy God. To worship God is highest joy. To serve God is perfect freedom. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing number 531, Seed Scattered, Seed Sown. I had no idea we'd have no choir today, uh, but they're among you, which is even better, perhaps. So uh, in case you don't know this song, number 531, Seed Scattered and Sown.
You may be seated. Friends, this morning the chancel flowers here are donated by Phil and Kathy Price in honor of Eric's 21st birthday this week. <laughs> Happy birthday, Eric. Please remember that coffee and donuts are available in the parlor throughout the entire morning. We have a few changes underfoot about the church facility. If you have not done so already, please check out the new pray ground uh, in, back in the parlor, uh, a space for parents and younger children to be close to the sanctuary during worship. Additionally, you may have noticed the Welcome Center across from Nicole's office, uh, as well as the reading suggestions that are now across from the pastor's study. Pursuing God with you too is in the conference room before and after worship these next several weeks. Together we will be listening to you two's lyrics, watching video of their concerts, and growing in our faith as we pursue uh, God with you too. Also, next Sunday, July 23rd, please, uh, please plan to be present during worship as our longtime friend and companion in ministry and mission, Mirna Perez of Juntos Guatemala, will be here worshiping alongside us. Mirna will be in Salina this week for some rest and relaxation. Uh, and is looking forward to reconnecting with old friends and meeting new ones, including Pastor Phil and his family. And lastly, if you have not done so already, please sign that friendship pad located at the end of the pews and pass them along to your neighbor. Uh, once this is done, to assist our ushers, we ask that the last signee tear that page out and place it on top of the blue folder to be collected after worship. Ask that you join with me in prayer. Gracious God, your care and providence extend to all. And so we come this day with our prayers for the world and all humanity. We pray for all nations and their leaders. In a world where people are so often formed by their own self-interest and sinfulness, we pray that your will would be done. Grant those who govern the knowledge that they are to serve for the greater good and to guide the world into a better place than it finds itself today. Let us work for a world of equality and fairness. There is still so much difficulty and darkness in our world. May our church and our world work for a more just and equitable society. We pray for our local communities. May the Spirit lead each community as it walks into an uncertain future. May we learn to place an emphasis on hospitality and welcome. And may our cities and towns be beacons of tolerance and love. During this busy summer, we pray that you would be with all those who travel. Grant mercy and safety to them as they travel near and far. Keep our children safe, we pray, in this summertime of sports and activities. Be with the elderly. May they find rest and renewal this season too. And for all who are sick and suffering, we ask your healing and peace. We pray for all churches big churches and small churches, rural churches and urban churches, churches of every denomination and creed. Especially, we pray for our Methodist brothers and sisters as they struggle with separation and dissension in their journey to become a more inclusive sign of your kingdom. We pray too for our Baptist brothers and sisters. May they recognize the gifts that so many have to offer and may you heal their divisions. May all who call on the name of Jesus Christ flourish in the days ahead. We ask this all in the name of Jesus and offer together the prayer that he taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is a long history of providing school supplies for families in this community and making sure that the students are equipped for the beginning of school. This is organized by a number of local agencies and service organizations with the goal of ma making sure that basic school supplies are available for grades K through eight, as well as providing dental screenings, school and sports physicals, and other services. This year that will occur at uh, Central High School on Tuesday, July 25th. If you're able to help, volunteers are also welcome to help pack backpacks on Monday, July 24th at 8.30 at Central. Friends, we know those brand new pencils, they wear down and they break. And those dry erase markers, they'll dry up. Boxes of tissues are emptied and all will need to be replaced. First Presbyterian has checked with our neighborhood school, Cottonwood Elementary, and we were given a list of items that they often run low on as the year progresses. A donation table has been set up outside of the sanctuary this month. You will be able to uh, place contributed items out there. Especially needed are pencils, both regular and jumbo size, broad tip dry erase markers, boxes of Kleenex, as well as underwear and sweatpants in sizes five through eight for students who, who just might need a change of clothes during the day. Your help with this effort is greatly appreciated. And thank you for making a difference in our church's neighborhood. And now, of course, we're also invited to join together as companions in ministry with our generous gifts as we continue our mission of presence in Salina and beyond. We offer numerous ways for you to participate in this life-changing ministry through your financial giving and transformational participation. Ushers, you may now come forward to collect our morning offering. Thank you, because with you, so many lives are changed.
Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for these gifts given this day and for the many gifts of our lives. May they be used to glorify you. Amen. Friends, please remain standing as we sing hymn number 15, All Creatures of Our God and King.
Because of God's great love in Jesus Christ, we can join in the task of sowing the seeds of love and justice in all we say and do. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.